in prayer because uh, so uh, we just want to honor the Lord but also to acknowledge that he is our source um, he's everything and uh, without him uh, it's just religion so father we uh, want to honor you today like may the spirit of your father fall on this place may the the identity and the rest uh, that you have for each one of us as we come into our identity as your sons and daughters come upon us today but uh, we we pray for open hearts uh, that the spirit of sonship would fall upon each one of you today uh, Lord let you be glorified let you be glorified uh, Lord I, I pray that every one of us would know where our home is and our home is with you and I pray if you've been searching for that home it's in the father your true father that your home is and uh, so I pray that uh, Lord um, our hearts be open to the revelation that you are our real father and I uh, pray for the anointing of these words today uh, that your spirit uh, would be guiding me but uh, also be having hearts to receive so I pray that in Jesus name Amen so uh, last week we talked about uh, sort of an opening of uh, what religion is and for some of you that weren't here I'll just give a recap and perhaps a recap is not such a bad idea anyway so uh, religion is where you and I make an effort to know God and please him without any prior revelation uh, in your heart of his love and acceptance for us let's see if I can get this going do I get that right next slide <laughs> In, in Christianity, though, everything comes from the Father. He is the source. True Christianity. I mean, you can have religious Christianity, but true Christianity, everything comes from the Father. He is the source. Um, it begins in his heart, and it flows from his heart, and all else we have to do is have open hearts to receive. Next slide, please. Religion and Christianity operate in the gap between humanity and God. So we have humanity, we have God, and uh, whether it be Christianity or religion, it's, it's seeking for us, it's operating in that gap and it's seeking to connect uh, humanity and God to, get, uh, to, that, uh, to make that connection. The second from the bottom. Ah, we got it. So there it is. I'm on my way. So there it is. God is there, or humanity is there, Christianity and religion is between. But uh, we know that uh, the difference between religion and Christianity is who initiates it and where, it come, where is the source. In religion, it's, re it's humanity that initiates and it's the source of religion comes from humanity but in true Christianity it comes from God and it's initiated by God because he's seeking you know, he's seeking your heart he'll do everything possible to come to connect with you and if you're here today and even if you're searching uh, then it's because he's brought you here So, where does the initiative come from and where is the goal which they're moving? We talked about that last week. Religion says I have to try harder. We don't need to strive him by our own efforts. Instead, we need to have our hearts open to receive him. And uh, it's about having a heart. But we see that by revelation and, for thing, and to remove out the things that are in the way of receiving him. So I mentioned how in religion we're the source and the initiators. 
The source of Christianity is God himself. The source of religion is humanity himself. And this is probably a controversial thing to say, but religion comes from Satan. Because Satan is the original orphan. Uh, he's the, he, he refused... He refused to be in the presence of God. He was, he was an angel, uh, a high-ranking angel, but wanted to, uh, to move outside the love of the Father so he could be like God. And so he wants to keep us all orphans. And the spirit of religion came upon mankind as we seek our own way to try and reach God. And uh, he was cast out from heaven. Uh, Satan was cast out of heaven, out of the presence of the Father's love. Religion is a major manifestation of, uh, of being without the Father. In fact, what, something common about all religions is that uh, God remains obscure. We don't know who he really is. So, in Isaiah 34, 13 to 14, it says, You said in your heart, I will ascend to the heavens. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the mount of his assembly and the utmost, uh, and the utmost heights of Mount Zaphon. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds and I will make myself the mo like the most high. You notice the I wills. It's all, it's not God originated. It's got God initiated. It comes from Satan himself. And that's something about the orphanness of this world. We, we think we all have to do it on our own. Everything we do on our own. It's all about I've got to do this. I, I've got to achieve this. But coming into recognition when we, we understand who God is, he is our source in every part of our life. Religion is the quest through self to be like God. It's self-generated and self-perpetuated. And it just cannot succeed. In fact, you'll burn out or you'll start thinking, this ain't working for me. And you'll go on to the next great experience that there is. Uh, if it's the new age, I've got to try, I've got to try this thing. Or I've got to try that thing. That was okay, I had something ha happen out of that. But really, where you really find where you truly belong is when you have an experience of who really God is. And he is your father. It's the only place you'll find peace. It's the only place that you'll know truly who you are, that you are loved by him. In Genesis 3, uh, 5 to 6, uh, you know, uh, it was the time where, uh, where Satan was in the garden and he was trying to tempt Eve and... Uh, and get them to believe that they could be like God. In fact, God uh, knows that when you eat, uh, your eyes will be opened and you'll be like God, knowing uh, good and evil. The woman saw that the tree was good for food and delightful uh, to look at and that it was desirable for it to obtaining wisdom. So our eyes would be open, but it's to good and evil. It's, uh, it's the knowledge of good. And, and our whole life comes into this place of, of judging this to be good or that to be bad. But when you have eyes that see through everything through love, judgment goes out the window. Rest comes into your heart and you really know who you are. And instead of coming a self-perpetuated, uh, self-generated, effort in religion there's something about coming to a place of a son and daughter and saying my father you are everything you are everything that I need and in a place of humility 
that you say, Lord, I am yours. I just want to receive you. I want to be dependent on you. I want to connect with your heart. I want to connect with the foundation of you. I want to connect with you in every way possible. And it's a river of his spirit flows downward from him to our lowest place in our humility. And we talked last week about, uh, about how uh, Paul said, who did not form, um, thought he was in the form of God, did not count equality of God to be a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself. And uh, Jesus was that way. It's about emptying yourself, not trying to make yourself stronger. When we empty ourselves, there's this self-perpetuating thing. Uh, God pours in and we receive and we go lower to receive more. And so we see that love pours out from itself. But it's constantly being replenished. It's an outward movement. It's just the way that it is. Love gives out, and, uh, but it's refilling itself. But uh, I think if I remember one thing, it's all about grace. And uh, I, I, I really value uh, Ray and for Michael for reminding us about that message that it's all about grace. It's a gift from God. There's, there's nothing that we can do uh, to, to do anything or earn anything. It's a free gift. That's what grace is. And so there is no man-made effort with grace. You just have to open your hearts to receive. And there's no upward reaching. It's all faith and grace that the spirit of Jesus lives inside you connecting with our spirit. I think that's one of the greatest things that I have to say is when you come into a, an understanding of that, that it's his spirit that lives in, within you and you come into faith in that, that just puts away all striving. You're not going out to reach for anything. And one of the things I like about the contemplative is that you, as you go past the bypass the mind, you come straight into the spirit that you connect with his spirit, you realize that his spirit is already within you. And you have the spirit of Jesus within you. And it's all by grace. I realize that um, I can strive and I can get fearful in my mind, but I just have to go into that place of quiet, bypassing my mind and all the judgments that, that come within my mind and go into my spirit to find He's already there. I like this um, Thomas Merton. Um, he's actually a Trappist monk. Uh, that, uh, he died in 1968 uh, in Bangkok, Thailand. He's got a whole story about him. But Thomas Merton said this, the Christian life is the return to the Father, the source the ground of all existence, through the Son, the splendor image of the Father, the Holy Spirit, the love of the Father and the Son. That's the whole message. And one of the things about, um, about the difference between religion and true Christianity is God is not, you're not able to know God. He is impersonal. In, uh, in the New Age or Hinduism or Eastern religions, it's a universal energy. It's, uh, it's a life force. But in true Christianity, it's about God our Father. And His Spirit comes into our spirit and cries out within our spirit, Father, Father, you're to my true Father. And so we are made in God's image. And uh, we are a reflection of a personal God. You can imagine, uh, and who wants a relationship with us, but you can imagine, if God was impersonal, how could he possibly, and he was a life force, how could he po 
possibly create something that wasn't his very nature or part of his being himself. And that is a person of God that uh, is made of love and connection and relationship. He is a personal God. We can have a personal relationship with him. So, uh, this diagram really sums it up. Uh, in uh, religion, God remains obs ob obscure. Religions, there's a speculation about who God is. In true Christianity, God is revealed as Father. True Christianity, Jesus reveals who the Father is. And of course, we hear those words of Jesus say that I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father except through me. So we accept Jesus into our hearts and he's our Savior and our Redeemer. And we receive his Spirit within us and it's his Spirit that's connected with the Father that we receive the Sonship that we have. We receive his Sonship. Remember in, in, uh, in Acts chapter 17, Paul was talking to the Athenians that uh, God remained an unknown God. That's what the Athenians would have described. God is the unknown God. But of course, we know that he's not. So, we may not earn favour. You'll find that we have to appease the gods in... Uh, in religion we have to do something so we please him otherwise he's going to be angry with us in Islam it's the same if I don't please God he's going to punish me in Islam also the Quran says you can't know God who God is but you have to obey him now I don't know about you but if I didn't if somebody told me to be obedient to somebody and I didn't have a relationship, you certainly wouldn't do that. But God does have to be personal. And when you understand in your heart who he really is as your father, and that there's an experience of his love that you can receive, then you have no, you automatically want to come in and please him. There's no striving or effort. There's no external effort on your behalf to want to do that. Yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom all things came and for whom we live. But there is one Lord Jesus Christ through whom all things came and through whom we live. And I like this because it really sums up everything. And so that we would be known that we are his true children, God released the spirit of sonship into our hearts, moving and crying out, my father, my true father. Now we are no longer slaves living under the law, but enjoy being God's very own sons and daughters. I, I, I remember in 2012, I was in Hendersonville, North Carolina, and I just came back from a six day retreat on a revelation of who God as father is. And I was prayed over by James Jordan and I came back and I just saw the world so differently. And through the eyes of the Father, there is so much love for each one of you. And that's the way he sees you. And I wanted to talk also about, um, in religion we have, there's always a mediator between God and humanity. But it's about who? Where that uh, mediation ori originates from, is it from humanity or is it from God? In humanity, it's, go it's mankind that selects the mediator. It's based on, on merit. They're considered to be, to be better, more educated, 
are more worthy to become the mediator. But in true Christianity, it's God, the Father, that selects our mediator. And it's Jesus. And it's Jesus that reconciles us to the Father, to humanity. He is our mediator. Not only did he, is he uh, the mediator, but in religion there's always sacrifices, things that happen in order to satisfy our, our connection with God. But it never, it, never, it never works out through man. I mean, in the Aaron, um, Aaronic and, and Levitical uh, priest of the time, then sacrifice was one of those things that were made, but they had to keep making the sacrifice. And that was a man-initiated uh, uh, sacrifice. But when it comes from the Father, there was only one sacrifice needed for a man for had to happen. And that was from the Father to send his only son down to us to be the sacrifice for one and the one and only time that was needed. And on the cross, we receive, we have received the grace and the empowerment now to return back to the Father. And I mentioned how the mediator in religion is chosen by men. And the mediator is the one who, who brings men and women into the presence of God. It's initiated by men. But even in the charismatic world, you can actually still have uh, something initiated to, because, you know, I used to go to conferences and uh, there'll be an awesome speaker. And the speaker uh, would just have the anointing and yet I didn't really have the relationship with God. So what I found is I kept on following the speaker and keep going to the conferences to get the experience instead of coming into an experience myself of the relationship. So we all have a personal responsibility to come into that relationship. Now I say responsibility, that's probably even the wrong word, but really just to open our hearts and say yes, yes to Jesus, yes to the mediator, so that we can come into a relationship with Jesus, but also come back to the Father. And I mentioned it's based on a merit system, uh, it's the one who's more holy and pure, competent, and can stand as a representative before God. And as a result, the whole system is created whereby a select group are more qualified to go to, to God on behalf of others. Now, I don't know about you, we're all qualified. We're all qualified through Jesus, his sacrifice. He did exactly the thing that makes us qualified. This, it's just all grace. Uh, and uh, we can come boldly before the throne of grace to receive, um, to come before the God, the Father. And so true Christianity, the mediator comes from the God. The mediator is chosen by God to act on behalf of God. It was the Father who sent his, uh, his Son, the mediator, Jesus Christ. It's all grace and mercy. It's not based on anybody's merit here. And I'm loved by the Father as I am. And I thank uh, for Marion for that word this morning. And I don't need to be more qualified to come to him. You don't have to clean up your act. You don't have to be uh, pure. In fact, just come to him. He only wants to come, to come back to him. So the purpose of Christianity is not to follow Jesus as a disciple. Oh, I'm going to just do what Jesus did. No, it's to receive his spirit. And by receiving his spirit, we receive his sonship, his relationship to the Father. But one of the issues with uh, Christianity is that we've become stuck on the mediator. Now, I'm not saying in a dishonorable way, but of course, it's, it's, we honor and just praise and worship Jesus. But Jesus came to show us the Father. And we really don't come into the, the fullness 
of our faith until we receive that spirit of sonship. In Hebrews 4.16, I mentioned before, let us come boldly unto the throne of grace. There are priests out there, there are gurus, there are imams, there's shamans, there's lamas, there's rabbis. They're all appointed by man whose origin is from man. But we have Jesus. Therefore, holy brothers, you share in the heavenly calling, consider Jesus the apostle and the high priest of our confession in Hebrews 3.1. Now, in uh, Hebrews 7, chapter 7, verse 5, it says, it talks about Jesus being from the order of, of Melchizedek, he being the high priest. But Melchizedek had no, uh, earthly, had no earthly mother and father. His origin was said to be from heaven. So Jesus is considered to be uh, a high priest in the order of Melchizedek. In her, so it says... Um, Hebrews tells us that Melchizedek was without father or mother or genealogy, but having neither a beginning of days nor end of days, but resembling the Son of God, he continues to be a, pr a priest heir forever. The, our mediator came from the eternal dimension. And in Hebrews 9.5 it says, For the reason Christ is the mediator of a new covenant, is that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance and inheritance of eternal life with him. You know, we're, we are just, uh, we are eternal beings just having a mortal experience right now. And uh, we have to really view things from that. And even when the world gets, gets, gets you down and you think, ah, oh, th uh, this, this sucks, you've got to take the, uh, the eternal perspective. And you have to take the eternal perspective from who, our, who, our, who Jesus is because he's overcome everything. So uh, we can get worried, but our first grounding has to be in our relationship with him. And he, re he just wants us to come to him and pray. So what are the blockages? There are blockages to receiving um, sonship. There could be unforgiveness. There could be... Uh, there could be bitterness. You could have a closed off heart for many reasons of experiences. So, uh, and you just haven't received an, uh, an understanding or a revelation in your heart of who really God the Father is. So I hope that we can uh, walk down that road together uh, so that all of us would, would uh, be able to come into that revelation of God the Father. You know, uh, we can be hurt and wounded by our earthly parents or authority figures, but that closes off. If we close our hearts off to our earthly mother and father, we're also closing our hearts off to God as Father. It's that part of our heart that, that receives God as Father. So really comes into a place of of coming into forgiveness to remove any bitterness or judgments we have against our mothers and fathers. You know, all of this, uh, what does it mean uh, for us? It all means that we are looking now to, to uh, our God, our Father is our source. And, uh, you know, there's so much that's happened of recent. We've lost our, our pastors. Uh, we had the, the full-time pastor who left in August. Now the, the regular, the interim pastor left. But, you know, um, I think this creates a new opportunity for all of us to really come into a, a relationship and a community as a body to seek him more, to seek that, uh, that relationship with him to seek him as our source. And uh, if you're willing and willing to come, we're willing to come with you on that journey as we 
we come into a deeper experience of who God is as Father, to know your Savior, Jesus, and, uh, and that we can, uh, yeah, we can just grow in knowing him, loving him, and experiencing his love for us. And uh, so uh, that's where we are, that we're on a marvelous journey. But one of the commitments I have, uh, that we have as, as the, well, somebody on the pastoral leadership and talking among the pastoral leadership ship team is that uh, we just want to make him the source. We want, we want to move away the religion into true Christianity. And it's a journey for all of us. And uh, I would just call upon you, um, please, where we want to do this together. And I want, I want us to build a true community.